Mondays. This is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank on the Voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. I'm Josh Whittison. It's now 913, and our interview segments are brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. We announced last week that the Indiana VFW Post 1989 is now, now has the property for a new post. Now they've got to try to build it. If you build it, they will definitely come. Joining us on the phone today is DJ Trotman, uh, G, DJ Strotman, pardon me, of the Indiana County VFW Post 1989. And DJ, if I am not mistaken, you are vice commander for the post. Is that right? Uh, correct. I'm senior vice commander. Senior vice commander. My mistake. But good morning, nonetheless. Good morning to you, Josh. How are, you th- how are things going up there? I know that you guys are probably over the moon now that you have a new, uh, some new property on board. Uh, we're excited. Uh, I think everybody's uh, got a new burst of energy to move forward now that we've uh, secured the property. Uh, the first step was was to find a new home, and we did that, and uh, so that was a big step for us. So, so now comes the next step in that process, and that's building the new home. So uh, I'm assuming because of the announcement you made, the property is now yours, so are you what are you looking at and what are some of the goals to putting together this uh this new post uh everybody has different thoughts and ideas on it it's something that we're going to have to sit down throughout the uh, next few months in our meetings and discuss which direction do we want to go uh the consensus so far is pretty much a uh a building putting up a metal building to be able to store everything have our meetings uh have restrooms in there and uh, a lot of guys are really emphasizing that they'd like to have like a covered pavilion outside with electric and water, so a place where they could gather mm-hmm. uh, with family and friends, uh, something like that, like a family uh, family fun atmosphere. Okay, so maybe that could be used to put on uh, events at the at the clubhouse for the membership there, and their families can come out there and be welcome as well. Uh, correct. It'd be nice to be able to have picnics out there. Uh, when we do fundraising in the future, it'd, nice, it'd be nice to be able to use our own building and our own property to do fundraising. Right now, we have a fundraising event coming up, and the Elks was gracious enough to open their doors to us. Well, that's very nice of the Elks Lodge, and we'll get to some of those fundraising events in just a few minutes. So, DJ, would there be the opportunity maybe as a way of uh, generating revenue for the Post? Would it be Would it be possible to maybe uh, have a, a party room in there as well, like you had at the uh, old post? Uh, we're not sure how we're going to go towards that. That'll really be up to the membership and in, in which direction we take it. Uh, we definitely did talk about the pavilion, building a covered pavilion with electric and everything and, and letting the membership use that, mm-hmm. like renting that out for parties and get-togethers and, and such like that. Okay. All right. Obviously, this is going to be completely different than what you're currently in, which is, from what I understand, a storefront over at Renaissance Circle, and even more different than uh, the than the prior home, which was the Indian Springs Golf and Country Club. Correct. It's going to be a big change for some of our members that come from the Country Club, or as I called it, the Taj Mahal of VFWs. Wow. So it was held in that high of a regard. Uh, it was as far as VSW. VFWs go. I believe it was one of the nicer ones, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But of, but unfortunately, things um, happened the way they did, and that forced uh, the VFW to kind of sell off that property and move on from there. And now you now a new home is on the horizon. But let's talk about the current location. As I said, Renaissance Circle. It's basically a storefront uh, that you that the the VFW is rented out. Correct. But it's still uh, it is. Go ahead. Uh, it, that's exactly what it is. It's a storefront that we rent it out, that we uh, hold our meetings in. And uh, it, we have a small office in the back, and uh, there's a restroom. And it's uh, a temporary location, but it provides us what we need to uh, have a base of operations uh, to move forward on our property. Talk about some of the services, though, that you've been able to provide out of that storefront. Obviously, you still have a mission to continue to serve the membership and the veterans that uh, you take in as members. Uh, correct. Yeah, we still do our scholarships. Uh, we do scholarships. Our auxiliary does scholarships. Uh, so we're, we're still able to do those. Uh, we still help veterans in need. Any veteran in Indiana County that falls on tough times uh, can get a hold of us. 
and we have a veterans relief fund and uh, we sit down and talk about it and figure out how we can help any veteran, whether they need fuel, oil, tires for their car, new brakes, uh, you know, the furnace goes out, whatever happens, we're here to take care of our fellow veterans. And what are some of the other programs that you're particularly proud of? Because you mentioned that there are several that the VFW does throughout the year that uh, that, you, that you are very proud of being a part of. Uh, correct. Uh, one thing we do that I, I really love is we go around at uh, Christmas time and one, somebody will go to every nursing home and call around and find out how many veterans are in the nursing home. And then we will go to Walmart and we will purchase uh, an item for every single one of those veterans. One year we did gloves and hats. One year we did pullover, like zip up sweaters. And we've done blankets, like quilts in the past. And we will go and deliver those to the nursing homes. And then at Christmas time, every veteran will get a gift from us. Well, that is actually pretty smart too, because uh, those are gifts that those people might, uh, they might be able to, to utilize. I mean, it gets cold everywhere. So yeah, a hat and gloves or a nice sweatshirt, that'll help them out in the long run and it'll make them feel better too. Correct. And it's nice to get a gift. Some of them don't have anybody. It's just them in there and they really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Talk about the membership of the VFW right now. How many members strong? Uh, The last check, I believe we were at 400 in the 90s, 498, 499 strong for Indiana. Wow. That is, that's impressive to say the least. And the fact that this is a, a place that I, whenever I was talking with some of the people with the national uh, VFW group uh, during uh, whenever we were covering all of the issues with the uh, uh, Indian Springs Golf and Country Club, they were saying that this was one of the key hubs that they wanted to have continue because it does serve not just Indiana borough, not just Indiana County, but a wide area. Correct. Uh, we have. VFWs all over the place, but we have people come from Derry, from Blairsville, Homer City. I mean, they come all over to be a part of our post in Indiana. It's it's amazing to hear that because you do hear of uh, other uh, posts and other uh, veterans groups, but the Indiana post seems to be the one that uh, is really well connected to the community as well. You mentioned one of those ways being the nursing home uh, um, project that you do every Christmas, but the VFW in Indiana it helps out many different ways, many times over. Uh, correct. Uh, we, we march in the parades. Uh, we do the uh, flags on the veterans' graves. We're one of the or- many organizations in town that comes out, and uh, we have a, a cemetery we sponsor, and we put all the flags out. Mm-hmm. Another thing we do is we offer our honor guard. We have an absolutely amazing honor guard that does a phenomenal job. And uh, they came out to give those last respects to that fallen soldier, uh, the last honor you can give them. Right. DJ, obviously, not just the activities uh, cost money for the VFW, but also the fact that you're going to have to build a new post. Now that's put a significant uh, crunch on the finances for the, for the organization. So fundraisers are in line. And is there a big one coming up? Yes. Saturday, October 30th. It's the last Saturday of the month, and it's at the Indiana Elks. Mm-hmm. And that'll, it'll be from noon till 5, and it's a gun bash. Wow, okay. So uh, have you, oh. have you, are you able to tell us uh, what some of the uh, guns that will be up for, uh, up for the giveaways? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the grand prize at the end of the night, the last gun at 5, is a AR-10 308 rifle. There's a Taurus 357 on there. There's a Kimber Micro 9. Uh, I think. Uh, I know there's a. Oh man, I'm drawing a blank, Josh. <laughs> it's okay. I kind of pulled that one out of thin air. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I was just trying to think of the big key guns that everybody asks if we have. Uh, there's a 1911 45 on there. Wow. Uh, from Rock Island Armory. Mm-hmm. That's a, a gun a lot of people like. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a lot of, a lot of different uh, firearms up for, up for the winning on this one. And it's uh, also, with it being a gun bash, there's also going to be other entertainment as well. There's going to be food and drink, I would assume. Absolutely. Free food and free beverages. Uh, we'll have walk-arounds, uh, pick of the tables, you know, the cherries and mm-hmm. everything like that. Yeah, the, that people the, like. the pull tickets, yeah. 
Correct. Yes. All right. We'll be having all that. Uh, the guns were provided by Gillen's Gun Shop. He's mm-hmm. actually one of our post members. Oh, wow. So he was, we were able to use a post member to do it to help out. All right. So, DJ, you said that's going to be October 30th, and it's going to be uh, at the e- at the Elks Lodge, pardon me. And uh, what were the times again? It's from noon till 5. And can people get tickets to this right now? Absolutely. We're selling 500 tickets. There's two numbers on each ticket, and you can reach out to any VFW Post member, and they can get you in connection with some tickets. Excellent. So just find a Post member. I'm sure you can find one just by bumping into one on the street, probably. And we also have a Facebook page. If you message us on Facebook, we will meet you somewhere in town and get you some tickets. Excellent. And say uh, somebody wants to join the post, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, they can reach out to us on Facebook. Social media has been amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they can uh, just stop by at the fair. We're going to have a booth set up at the fair this year to try to do some recruitment there. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So they can reach out to us there as well. All right, DJ Strotman, thank you very much for joining us here on Indiana in the Morning to give us an update on everything going on with the VFW. All the best, and I hope everything goes well, and uh, keep us updated on the uh, project to build a new post for the for the VFW. Thanks again. All right. Thank you for having me, Josh. All right, you have a good day. That's DJ Strotman with the Indiana VFW Post 1989 joining us this morning here on Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank on WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160. Our interviews are presented by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Firm representing injured people.